Well, we've all seen dogs that love to chew on sticks and even will run with them. And usually it's not a problem, but just the other day, we had this German Shepherd pup that came in and was running with a stick, and he fell, or he got it in his mouth, and he hit something, and you can see the huge wound right below his tongue. Uh, he actually tore probably a three-inch gash um, in his tongue, and actually, as you can see, that where the tongue's attached, the frenulum got torn, uh, and so we have to suture that all up. And unfortunately, it's, well, not unfortunately, but it's not really a sterile surgery. Um, you can't, you can drape them up a little bit, but you can't really prep them up like you do normally surgeries. And this tongue is so vascular that it'll heal. Right now, what I'm doing is I'm taking a strip off of the very top uh, edge of the laceration cut. And I want to, what we call freshen up the cut. We want to make it... Um, so it's going to heal like it just happens. So I'm taking tissue. This is a slice, uh, a little piece. The, the stick kind of sliced the, the tongue in two edges. So I'm, there's a top one and a bottom one. And there was kind of middle one. And so I was slicing off a piece of the middle edge too. And then I start from the very back. It's hard to get into when you're getting behind the, the teeth there and sewing up the edges together uh, with a suture. And we're using an absorbable suture because we're not going to try to take the, the sutures out in um, 10 days. In fact, this dog wouldn't even hardly let us look at its mouth. I opened his mouth and I just saw a glimpse of that big gash. So you may not see a big bunch of bleeding from a wound like this. It may not bleed much at all, but you, you can look under the tongue. Sometimes a cat will swallow a string and it will be hooked under the tongue and dogs can get warts under the tongue and they can get cuts under the tongue so when you're looking for blood coming from the mouth it's not a bad idea to just remember that that also could come from under the tongue you can see I'm there's the frenulum the thing I was talking about that's attaching the tongue helping to attach the tongue to the inside of the mouth and I need to sew that very carefully down uh, to the, the base. So you can see how wide that wound is. And I'm going to sew it in. And I'll show you a picture of the frenulum of the tongue in humans I found. See the little white thing? See the teeth? And then the white thing and then the tongue? Uh, that's The white thing is the thing that was torn in this dog. Looks a little bit like an alien, doesn't it? Anyway, so I'm uh, continuing to sew. You start at the very back and you go forward with the simple interrupted sutures. I did some continuous sutures, some ones that kind of are, are continuous and not individual uh, because in the back because it was so hard to get back there. But now I'm finishing up with uh, some 2 watt monocryl individual sutures, uh, just a few millimeters apart around the middle of the tongue, the frenulum on the tongue and back, just to make sure it holds together because there's no way I can say, hey, could you just rest that mouth and not chew or lick anything? That's not going to happen. And of course, soft food's always better than hard food when this happens because soft food uh, won't uh, gouge the tongue and the tissues like hard food will. So you can either wet down soft food or you can feed canned food or make the food real soupy with water. You can also make homemade food. Uh, as I show you how in my book, Dog Diet Answer Book. But anyway, I get, put some sutures pretty close together back there because um, the you want the tongue to be held together as, as the best that we can. And we don't want sutures too close together because it cuts off circulation or too tight because it cuts off circulation. But you want them uh, just close enough to hold the tissue together. And like I said, the tongue's very vascular. It will heal quickly. Within 14 days, it the sutures uh, will be um, great. There, so I checked the rest of the mouth. There's the incisors. There's the premolars the, and then the molar in back. I look around the mouth to make sure there's no wounds or other cuts or scrapes. There's some original wound right there at the angle of the mouth, the lips, uh, th where the bone scraped. And that's where originally the owner was, was concerned. But then uh, then the dog just wouldn't eat, even with those little tiny wounds. And when she brought uh, her in, I looked in. Uh, 
brought him in. I looked in, and sure enough, he had a big old wound underneath. There's the frenulum, the the the, the attachment, the tongue the, with that alien-looking thing I showed you before. Um, and so you can see why a tennis ball might be a better uh, throw toy for a dog rather than a big stick, a sharp stick. But most dogs don't. Millions of dogs carry around sticks and they don't have any of those problems. But remember, uh, some dogs will swallow pieces of a Kong toy and get obstructed. Some dogs will chew up uh, toys and get uh, indigestion. And some dogs will fall down and on a stick and tear their tongue. Well, here's the part of the clip where I talk to you about my Dog Diet Answer book, my new book. I talk about all kinds of dog foods um, and also a little bit about home cooking. You can Go to my website, dogdishdiet.com, and you can check out all three books. Dog Diet Answer Book is my newest one, um, and they're right there. If you feed your dog uh, better ingredients, chances are they'll be happier, live longer, and you'll have less vet bills. doesn't mean you have to cook for them all, but just pick out great food. Have a great day.